The Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The Constitution was written for moral, spiritual people who could discern the times and the seasons through the Word of God. Now this right here is what a bold, righteous, biblical leader is supposed to look like. Someone that recognizes Christians have to speak up about politics, especially in this crazy world that we're living in. And if we want to protect our First Amendment right to religious freedom, then we absolutely should support MAGA and vote Donald J. Trump for president. MAGA Black, I know the plight that's going on in the inner cities, inside, the behind the scenes as a pastor for 22 years. There is nowhere else to go but to come back home. I'm talking to the black community, back home to the Republican Party because that's what has to happen. That Republican Party, if I can play, you know, the reporter pushing back, that Republican Party is different than the one that they left, right? Yeah. That's why MAGA Black, we're talking about the policies that makes sense, the policies that brought us together. Uh, it just so happened it was under that brash New Yorker, some guy named Trump, I, you know, heard of him. <laughs> but, but it was really what worked. Where's a white shirt and a red tie, if I'm not mistaken? Oh my God, yeah. but it's what worked. Uh, cutting taxes, lowering uh, the unemployment, raising employment. These things actually worked. Peace through strength. Everything that was done in our foreign trade, uh, building up our military, all of those things worked. That's the Republican Party I'm talking about. America first. That's what has to happen. I'm not talking about this rhino Republican Party. I'm talking about the Republican Party that freed the slaves, the party of Lincoln. We're, we're, we're talking about the party that when, when the slaves got out and they said, where we go? The first Republican black Congress was initiated. That's the Republican Party I'm talking about. The party of Frederick Douglass. That's the party. Why then are so many of our modern black leaders, deceased and living, why were they more associated with the Democratic Party? I'm not talking about in the 60s. I'm not talking about in the 70s or the 80s. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about John Lewis. I'm talking about Andrew Young and Julian Bond. I'm talking about Don McEachin, who we just talked about. Maybe Adam Clayton Powell takes us a little farther back, but you look at Benjamin Hooks. You, you know all the people I'm talking about. Why are they so associated with the Democratic Party? Why do they not see that that's where the Democratic party is why the democratic modern democratic party gave us first african-american president we have the first african-american female vice president seems like that would be reason to celebrate well it goes back to family again what was the family really all about the family was about hard work go to school pay your bills stay out of trouble and the democrat party if we really look real close did the opposite massive incarceration uh, totally indoctrinating our kids through things like CRT. Let's be fair, CRT is the emperor's new clothes, right? It's been taught by a couple of teachers in a couple of schools yeah. in, a, in a country of over 300 million people, right? That's not a, 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 an epidemic. Yeah, well, what happened was when it started saying that white men are the problem and black people will always be oppressed, that's an issue in a country called the United States of America. Of course it's an issue, but it's not an issue because it's so isolated in little places where it's yeah. happened. Just like if there's somebody teaching a class that flies in the face of the Constitution, says the Constitution's a fake document. I'm not saying that exists, but if one person's doing it in the middle of Iowa, that's not a problem in America. Well, what happened was that the division anywhere can become division everywhere. So uh, as a pastor, it's a little leaven, leaven's a whole lump. So it's the little things that we ignore that keep a mountain and surmounting itself. Now it becomes an obstruction. It becomes an obstacle. And we allow these things, these little things to continue. Now we're dealing with a Goliath. So now we have to take down the giants, the giants of technology, the, the, the giants of what we call the uniparty. And so here we are. Now we have to really mean it that if we're going to uh, be uh, solid and form solidarities, now has to happen. So that, that's what MAGA is really all about now. But do you see MAGA as uniting? I mean, certainly it unites people behind it and its idea and this candidate. A lot of people say it's a cult. It's a cult of personality, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that before, but always. And I have people here, Pastor, who are saying to me that they would take a bullet for Donald Trump. He's not the president. He's not... You know, that, that's, that's unusual. You don't hear that a lot. This is what has happened. 
all of the atrocities, the calamities, the, 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 the whole debacle at the, at the border, everything now is causing people to awaken to what America is really all about. So this awakening now is taking on personal interests. So every community now is saying, I got something to lose in this if we don't stand together. And so that's what we're seeing. When, when a person says that, that's a personal interest. He's saying, yeah, and you know, everybody's not willing to die for anybody. But there are some who will say, it's, it's that cause right now. That's what Patrick Henry said. Give me liberty or give me death. And now that we're hearing it again, it sounds to some foreign, but this is in the roots of this country. This is what America's all about. These, these men came from farmers and, and business people, and most of them were just, just wanting things to be better who fought for this nation back in 1776. You're talking about awakening. Part of awakening is woke, right? People talking about woke. What does that mean to you? What does the word woke mean? Well, woke, woke is a, a false idea of awakening. It, it does everything opposite of awakening, which is a revival, which comes from a spiritual stirring of one's consciousness. And so if you have a lot of dirt, you know, in your mind, a lot of diluted or polluted things, what a revival does is shake the trees again so that now you can begin to see clearly. But what woke does, woke gives a, a, a false assimilation of action. Okay, I'm woke. Well, any, it, it doesn't give action. Define it. What, what is woke? It, it, it tells you what cannot work, what will not work in a people of community. Right, but tell me what it is, though. If I say I'm a man, and then I say all of a sudden I identify as a woman, that's woke. That's, it, 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 it gives demonstration of the total opposite of freedom, liberty, consciousness, all of those things. Woke actually shuts down, so it pretends... Its eyes are open, but their eyes are really asleep. And so when a person says that illegal immigration is cool, that's woke. Why is that woke? It's woke because we know a nation cannot survive off of bringing la de dadi I'm being crazy now, but la de dadi and everybody into the country. A nation cannot remain sovereign if it keeps its borders open. And why do we expect America to do it when all these other nations, other places, close and shut their borders. Isn't feeding your tired, your poor, your hungry, isn't that both a part of someone yeah. of the cloth as well as part of the, the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, but it's in the context of righteousness. Um, a, a nation that is not lifted up, if, 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 if it is exalted, it says righteousness exalts a nation. What does that mean? It means doing things right or the right way, or God's way of doing things. But sin is a reproach to any people. So if I say, give me your poor, give me your foreign, you know, it was under the understanding of when you come in, you have to become us. Okay, but who defines sin, right? I mean, some people, for some people, it's a sin to say, to build a wall and say you can't come over it. To That's some people, it's a sin to let that person in without checking their papers and giving them due process. I mean, who's to define it? Well, I went to that class. Um, God defines what sin is. And, and so as a Christian nation, a Christian Judeo nation, we cannot lose our roots in that in understanding that the word of God is the infallible word of doctrine and truth. Well, what if you're a Muslim in this country? What if you're an atheist? What if you're a Jew? What if you are Sikh or Hindu? You know, one's precepts of religion are different than yours, different than mine, different than hers. Well, this is what I love about this nation. Our founding fathers put together what is called the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment, uh, the, the freedom of what? Religion. Um, it, it did that without, what, wanting people to assimilate into a religion that controlled the people. And this nation was always designed to evangelize, even those that don't agree with us. And, and so disagreement does not mean disunity. It just means an opportunity for us to come together. That's why it's called a more perfect union. Our founding fathers knew, like Benjamin Franklin came out of the halls of, uh, of Philly, Constitutional Hall, and the, the young lady asked him, what, what do we got here? Yeah. He says, daughter, a republic, if <laughs> we can keep it. And so the Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The Constitution was written for moral, spiritual people who could discern the times and the seasons through the Word of God. 
Mm, goodness gracious, that right there was gooder than chicken. My man did not miss a single beat. Thank God for that pastor for standing on the truth of our real history and not just regurgitating lying leftist propaganda, not just making it up as he goes and throwing stuff until something sticks to the wall like these radical secular extremists on the left seem to do almost every single day. Did y'all hear him? He said the party of Lincoln, formerly known as Honest Abe, one of the best, if not the greatest presidents our nation has ever had outside of Big 45. And I know Trump didn't free any slaves, but what he did do is free innocent baby blessings in the womb from wicked Roe v. Wade. And we've still got a long way to go before abortion is completely illegal in every state, but that was a huge step. It was monumental. And he's always fought for America first and defended the God-given rights that our founding fathers established back in 1776 and 1787. Now more than ever, we're in a battle for the soul of our nation. I I don't think people understand the severity of how real it is out in these streets. It is a fight of good versus evil, literally. And whether folks like it or not, you have to be informed about politics so you're able to discern who and what to support. Just think about it. Politics affects almost everything that we do. Your church, your family, your health, your money, your business, your freedom, your property, evangelism, the poor, the unborn, everything and every body is affected by politics. And if you claim to be a Christian, then you can't just go curl up in a in a ball like a coward and hide from these hot button topics. Oh, but Devin, the, the Bible doesn't mention voting for presidents. You're right. It doesn't specifically refer to presidents because they weren't called that back in the day. But the Bible does show us time and time again, spiritual leaders that were inspired by God that fought for righteousness. They directly influenced governments and political leaders of their times from Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, and Paul to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and tons more, all of them casted their votes with actions to defend godly values. So you have to take a step back and ask yourself, what is most important to you at the end of the day? Forget what the media smears on headlines to hype everybody up against each other and makes fo make folks anxious. Set aside all the trumped up charges, the attempts to destroy this man's family legacy, and everything that people loved about him before he ran for office. Don't vote against a guy based on random TV personalities, derangement syndrome, actually read the policies for yourself and then vote for the guy that best aligns with your interests. That's the key. That's the actual solution to the problem. Don't just do what people tell you. Make an informed decision based on being informed. And unless you want to be an all-out socialist atheist state like North Korea, then it's in all of our best interest to put down the diversity inclusion crap that separates and weakens us. Instead, how about we we truly come together in unity and strengthen this nation again. Let's defend the God-given rights that are embedded in our constitution. Most of the rest of the world doesn't have what a lot of people here have taken for granted in this country. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, candy stripe, whatever ethnicity, brave men and women of all different kinds have fought and died and sacrificed for the things that we have today, for the freedoms, the luxuries, the amenities that we get to enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. They put it all on the line so that we can enjoy that. And in Unless we protect and vote for an America first agenda, then we're going to lose our republic. That is a promise. God is not going to restore and bless this nation if we're not even blessing God and we're not standing for what God deems as his commandments, for, for what is righteous and what is good versus what is evil. People are following that wide path, that highway to hell. They're doing everything that, that leans into fleshly desire and curving their cravings, but they're not curving the only craving that, that matters. And that's looking to Jesus Christ. And the Biden regime has already showed us countless times that they'll sell us to China or the highest bidder in a heartbeat. They've also demonstrated exactly where they stand when it comes to value and life in the womb. They don't, which is why they keep arresting pro-lifers. They are literally going out and arresting people that are against murder through abortion and putting those people in jail. It's ridiculous. Trump never did that. He also didn't voluntarily just leave the southern border doors wide open for violence and drugs to come flooding in and putting our families in harm's way. He said, build that wall. He said, make it as high, far and wide as humanly possible because he recognized the hazard that it would be if illegal aliens were allowed to just walk in willy nilly unvetted. We don't discriminate against any kind, but you need to go through the necessary legal means and precautions to become a citizen here. That's why we're the greatest nation on the face of God's green earth currently may not be that way in a few years if we have one more year of this uh, current administration. But Trump, he kept inflation down. He created more jobs. He lowered taxes. We could go on and on 
about the list of positives that far outweighs any negatives of the big bad orange boogeyman that the left is so terrified of. So that's why between the two options that God has given us as of now, come November, I'll unashamedly be casting my vote for Trump. And I pray y'all do the same, but I'll end my rant there. Drop a comment below. Let me know who you support and why. I would love to hear it. Let's keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you go check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get all the awesome shirts you see me wearing in every single video. They're all made by my beautiful wife. This one says created with a purpose. It has it on the chest and on the sleeve. It's based on Ephesians 2 verse 10. I like mine a little baggy so it seems a little extra room to move and groove but we got all different sizes ranging from itty bitty extra small to big big and hefty 5x a bunch of colors different designs all of that i'm sure you could find something that you like or a great gift for someone that you love outside of that you can always join the gibson family here on youtube and become a member you can buy me a coffee you can join the patreon family all those links are down below as well by no means do you have to do any of that just showing up and allowing my freckle face to rant at you for a few minutes i am greatly appreciative i love y'all i cannot thank you enough until next time i'll be praying for you godspeed i'm gone